Ciao ragazzi, bentornati su House Crusaders, il canale 100% dedicato al mondo di Warhammer e Jaws. Continuiamo il Road to Clash. Quest'oggi abbiamo qui con noi Agnes, capitana del team olandese, eh, che ci aiuterà a capire meglio come si gioca a, a, a Jaws Sigmar nel suo paese, che tipo di, uh, di comunità c'è, che tipo di ambiente turnistico troviamo, anche che tipo di giocatori potremmo incontrare, come vi si vive il gioco, eh, continuo ad approfondire in questa rubrica uh, l'approccio al gioco in tutto il resto del mondo. Agnes, thank you and welcome to the channel. Oh, it's nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I was telling everybody that we are going to get to know a little bit more about uh, Jock's humor in, uh, in Holland. And uh, yeah, it should be, should be really nice to, to get into some, some details about, about your country. And um, yeah, I think, I think we, we, can, we can start just about talking a, bit, a little bit about you. And uh, in general, what, how, did you, how did you get to play the game? What was the, the beginning for you? How did you get into the game? Yeah, I used to play World of Warcraft for a very long time. Same here. And <laughs> I really loved the game. So four years ago, I bought an, uh, the huge board game for World of Warcraft, which has 72 miniatures in it oh. and they look really nice so i said to my husband hey do you think there is a way to paint miniatures <laughs> do you think that there is paint to do something like that and he said yeah of course it's whole business built around it and i was like oh really what's that so he said well there is a store in uh, rotterdam it's called warhammer and we could check it out and that's how it started i went to the store four years ago and i came home and uh, started set for storm cost <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool Cool. So I you're never. You're... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I never heard about Wargaming and Warhammer before that. It's by now I'm, I'm really surprised how this avoided me in, uh, in 40 years. Mm, cool. Well, so the, 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 the segue for you was video games. So you were into Warcraft. And I'm yeah. guessing also the, the old uh, Warcraft, not World of Warcraft game, right? One of yeah, I played uh, the third. Uh, Warcraft 3. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Really, yeah, yeah, really I, I, I played I played some Warcraft too. Um and uh yeah, I mean it's it, they're really close worlds, I think. The, the the fantasy universe and fiction in general. They're really I love them both at the same time. And uh yeah. So your husband kind of tricked you into going to this shop and uh <laughs> went well, to he actually uh... never played and he still doesn't play. Uh -huh. But uh i fall in love with the game almost immediately. So I started to play uh, Stormcast then four years ago because the guys in the store said it's an army which is very easy to start with. It's difficult to master, but very uh, good for beginners. So I started to play um, at the store and that's what I did more or less for one and a half year. Um, and around one and Two and a half years ago, I went for my first tournament. It's called the Bloodstorm. That's the most non-Dutch tournament. Everyone <laughs> loves it. And it was really fun. And I thought, oh, it's, it's nice to spend the whole day playing uh, Warhammer, standing at the tables. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I decided I would like to visit more and more uh, tournaments and taking the game maybe a bit more serious than before. So how well, I was, I was it for you? Like, what was the... The feedback. What was the what what, what the impression you, did you get get from the first tournament? Like from being a casual player, then going to the competitive world. Um, well, Bloodstorm is used to be a very uh, casual friendly tournament. It's actually uh, was designed in in the first couple of years for for fun, so inviting casual players, beginner players. That's why it was really ideal to start there. Um, but our community that time was still very mixed, so we had some very competitive player there and very casual players. It was a good mix. Uh, I think the event was very much in balance, um, but mostly very, very much fun. Really, uh, everyone enjoyed it. It was lots of different armies, not only metal, not five faction, but everyone could take whatever they wanted. So it was, it was really great. It was very different because um, a half year later, I decided to go to the first tournament to Germany. Mm, nice. 
And uh, well, that was really an eye opener. When I went to Germany for the first tournament, I thought, okay, this is a very different game than I got used to. <laughs> that was really competitive. The guys were there only to winning. They knew the rules really well in and out. That, uh, that made for me clear that it's a different game and I want to play that. I want to play that where you have to be really sharp and really know what you do to get ahead. For me, that happened two years ago. That was uh, the day when I decided, okay, I want to get into a competitive warmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all go through uh, that process. I think it's, 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 it's interesting because it, it, it reminds me kind of kind of the, the way competitive players play chess, right? It can be seen as a very easy and not complex game, but at the same time, all those moves are really thought and then from the outside, you can't really know, I can't really understand maybe. But then, yeah, it's the same in Age of Sigma. Whenever you go into that competitive point of view, competitive aspect, you you really start to get all the nuance or the finesse behind the, yeah. the, the builds and the moves and the, all that stuff. Yes, I think it's uh, the difference between narrative play or fun play and competitive play is really big. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like two different hobbies. And both of the, the game style has its own place in the hobby, which is great because every can, everyone can have fun on their own way. Uh, but I noticed really fast that for me, the competitive play, what makes me happy, it's very tiring, but it's also very exciting. And I, I just love it. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. don't even play it even as a narrative player. I, I love playing 2000 point games. I hardly played anything less than that because I don't feel that the game is very, very balanced under 2000 points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, it's it's uh, it's really it takes a lot of investment at the same time to play competitively. But I think that gives you also lots of happiness and satisfaction when you reach some goals. Even just having fun, even understanding that you are getting better slowly, gives you lots of good good feelings and good feedback about you as a player. And what makes me excited to looking forward to getting back to gaming hopefully <laughs> whenever we can. Yeah. I just guys, really uh, love when you mm-hmm. yeah, just ask. No, I, I was wondering if you guys are, are able to play in person at this at this, this moment. Uh, well, right now, the rules in the Netherlands that you are advised to see one person per day, okay. but it's like an advice. So you can set more people in your house if you feel it's safe, which makes we can play personal. Very nice. Um, and very honestly, if you organize small training days um, in a very big place, with tables far away from each other, with open windows, you can wash your hands. So we are doing a bit more than maybe advised, but I don't think you can keep up playing competitive without training and without playing. You get really rusty. I, I noticed that between Uh, March 2020 and October 2000, yeah, in October 2020, we hardly played any game. And in the first couple of days, you just like start all over. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, That's true. Um, it's it's really something like like sports maybe or like fitness in general. If you stop, you have to start over again. It's hard to, yeah. to get back into the right shape. And uh, to get back, get back into that mindset that where you have to really pay attention to every single little detail. But uh, yeah, at the same time, I, re- I really agree with what you were saying about competitive play because you know, it rewards you for uh, working hard, for um, paying attention to the, to the details of the game, and uh, and it's exciting even at, at the the listing listing stage, list building stage, because. You have a whole whole lot of things you have to keep in mind when you build your list. Like, what who am yes. I going to face? What types of games? What types of meta? Or all the sort of things. So yeah, list building is list yes, building I... is almost a hobby itself. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I I do love list building. I can spend hours on just changing uh, units in and out to see would it work better or not. I I really love that part. Yeah, did, did, did I. You... Do you have an approach, special approach to list building? Like, do you have a style of 
of gaming that you prefer? Uh, you, you mentioned Stormcast. Like, are you okay with like I don't know a, a very elite style army like Stormcast, or do you like you know, more bodies or I don't know? Well, I switched away from Stormcast when I decided to go more into competitive. I decided to play Seraphon, uh -huh. uh, even with an old book. Yeah. Um, I really like Seraphon, but uh, I really like Stormcast. I prefer board control. I like to have enough units and enough models on uh, the table to score objective and control where my opponent moves. And Stormcast didn't do it for me. Mm. I tried it, but it's just not made for that. Yeah. So when uh, I switched to Seraphon, it was of course a lot of fun with the old book. You could summon so many things Teleport and so some. many skins. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mostly when I make a, a list, I want to make sure that I have enough models for board control and uh, objective score. Yeah, no, I agree with that because bottom of the line, uh, it's an objective game. So you you can be able to remove how many models you want, but if you don't score the, the objectives, uh, yeah. it's a win. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not going to kill my opponent. I'm not there to remove his models unless it's necessary. I'm more about make sure it's the game goes how I plan to go. So oh. that's that's for me the most important. Oh, I, yeah, I like this strategy. Yeah. And uh, I, I really, I just really like Lord Croc. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. These are the the best, the best, like the most important two things for me in gaming: loving the models and loving the play style. And uh, that's why, because uh, whenever I play, you will never see me play an army that I don't like from uh, at least both of those uh, those points because. I mean, I think it's pointless if you spend lots of time and money and whatnot with those models. At least you have to like them, and at the same time, you have to enjoy playing with them. So, I really agree exactly. With. Yeah, I really like Cards and Overlords. I think it's a very nice army to play, but I don't like the models. Yeah. So I was really wondering, can I make something else? But I'm also not really in converting. I just like to buy things, paint it, and use them. I said, no, it's not an army I'm going to play because I really don't like the models. And if you play competitive, you are going to run 100, 200 matches with them and you have to look them for hours. That's not the way to do. Yeah, it's not going to be fun. For me, no. for example, the same thing happened for with Luminous um, because I really love the play style, the control, the spells and whatnot, but I, I just don't like the models. So uh, they're, they're not for me and uh, I... Yeah, they are I, special. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, getting to into the, the 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 character of the game in, in Netherlands, um, do, do you guys have like a ranking system? Do you have like clubs that organize tournaments or that have like uh, affiliates? And how, how how is it organized for you guys? Okay. Um, the Age of Sigmar community in the Netherlands is rather. Um, special still or in, in a very in a, in a growing phase let's say like that we have lots of small clubs all over the country but we don't really have a connection yet we are starting to build it now uh, i think we have like two official clubs and the rest is just like groups which based around the cities so we have like 70 players around uh, rotterdam we have like 40 players in harlem some players around eindhoven uh, but we don't have one big community yet. Mm -hmm. It's still growing, um, especially the competitive communities right now very, very small. And most of the players is playing narrative. And you have to imagine that I expect we have around four or five hundred people, people uh, who plays the game really daily. But we have like 30 people, maximum 40 people who are in the competitive play. But we are all over the country. And although Netherlands is small, to drive three hours just to play a game is not something you want to do. So that holds us a bit back from building a very competitive community. But we are working on it. Uh, for tournaments, we have three uh, organizers here. We have the Bloodstorm, which I already mentioned. Uh, they usually organize two uh, tournaments per day. We have Alliance Open, they do the GT twice a year. 
uh, they are definitely the most uh, uh, known tournament organizer and their events is um, they invite 64 people per uh, tournament mm -hmm. and we have an uh, in uh, Amersfoort and gaming club the Lost Legion they try to organize like two tournament per day uh, per year as well of course last year sadly went different we had uh, like two or three tournaments in the whole year mm, yeah yeah and hopefully uh, from the summer on we can do more mm -hmm. um, we don't we would like to have uh, a more living community where people can see each other, meeting each other and talking more often. Um, but it's difficult, um, especially if you have small groups, they get used to each other so much. It's difficult to get in touch, but we have lots of uh, excited people and very good uh, painters, hobbyists amongst us, which makes it very fun. For the ranking system, because we just started to um, move into and learning the competitive play style, the ranking system um, is not there yet. Uh, around half a year ago, I, uh, together with uh, two of my friends, created a website for ranking. Cool. Um, so we have now a Dutch Wargaming uh, website for where we use for 40k. It could be at uh, Fantasy as well and Age of Sigmar and every tournament or training games can be added to create a uh, training over a ranking system. We would like to use it in the future, but right now everything just stands still because of COVID. Hmm. What's the address of the um, site? Just for out of curiosity, so that people can check it out. Hmm? Well, what is the address of the website if it's online? Dutch World Gaming Rank... Oh, I have to look it up. I, no I'm not even sure. <laughs> Um, I can uh, tell you, and you can put it in the link later. Absolutely, yeah. So then people people can yeah. check it out. It should be interesting uh, for like countries like you that are, have a, a growing community that is starting to get connected to to it within each other. So it can be an inspiration for people maybe to do the same. And yeah, and I, and I think um, I was thinking that you even even just being in the team and uh, uh, getting people excited and ready for the events like ETC was and our iOS world is going to be. Uh, I think you're doing uh, an important job of connecting people because I'm guessing um, you have people in the team that are not, not not maybe from the same region or from the same city. So you, you are creating some ties, right? I, I, I was thinking. Yes, definitely. When we started to ask people to sign up for the team, then likely we got uh, lots of uh, people from all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, mostly from the south part of the country so we hope to reach the north as well but they are a bit too far mm -hmm. or for their feeling a bit too far mm -hmm. uh, but we have um, right now around 15 different cities and location which is great because we see each other and we can meet with each other and partially that's why i, I i'm the captain of the team as well i'm not the captain because i'm the best player of the country that's not but I love to work for the community and I want to put hard work in it to make sure that it's a community which works together, we have connection, we see each other and we just have the option to talk mm -hmm. and play together. So I really hope to reach out for everyone in the future. Of course, this year is a bit different. I mean, Milan is very close. We have like four or five months to prepare. It gives us a very short amount of time to find new players. But one of my aim is for the next year is reach out for communities who are not known yet, or they are not part of uh, the big group app that we have on WhatsApp to talk to each other and find those players because you never know which kind of gem you can find there. Yeah, yeah, well, um, hopefully this video can help some people out and uh, we, we can get the voice over the, the northern part of the, of the country. And at the same time, the fact that uh, the, the, the following EOS World event should be in spring uh, 2022, yes. uh, it's, it's kind of a good, uh, yeah, almost kind of a, in a year or so. So it's, uh, it's you, everybody has lot, lots, lots of more time to be prepared, prepare to reach out to other people, to yeah. keep the work uh, going and uh, hopefully to 
be able to involve even more people for the following events we will have with Air Sports. Yeah, to be honest, how I see also the team itself, of course, we have the players who are going to Milan, but we still have all the players who signed up and they are in the running for the coming years. It's not only about going to the event itself, but it's about improving ourselves as a community together. You are just as good player as the opponent you play against. So if we can raise the bar and improve as a players together, then we will have better and better players all over the country. Yes, yeah, that's that's, that's already a big, a big win for for you guys to, uh, whatever, however the tournament goes, just to yeah work on this uh, this uh, this community and to get together as much as possible yeah, definitely. through these big events that get people excited because I'm sure you had lots of uh application for the team I and mean, people look forward to these kinds of events yeah we got around 22 applications which i think it's a good number uh seeing the community here uh but i'm sure that for next year we will have more if people get aware of uh, the event through these videos and they know what is it as far as i can see lots of people still doesn't even understand what it was words about Yes. and how it played why is it played why is it fun mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so well we will be the uh the pioneers of uh Elf's world and tell everybody how cool it is hopefully showing it uh in september uh to photos post tweets uh live streamings also and oh, that's uh, nice. yeah yeah everybody will be will be wanting to come to the the next events for single tournaments or for the, the team events as well oh Right. So, um, uh, well, I hope I hope you 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 guys will, will be able to keep connecting, and I hope this video can help a little bit in this uh, this task that is important, and you are really really working hard on yourself, especially. And uh, the last question and curiosity I had was, how are you guys getting together to to prepare the event for Milan? Do you guys have trainings? Do you have a uh, I don't know, training sessions or maybe you're using TTS as some, some other people are doing. We are not using TTS. Um, we more or less all agree that TTS is not giving you the same experience as the game at the table. I agree. So we just decided not using TTS. Um, we do two things. Um, we created two teams. We have the team who is planning to go to Milan and we have a team who is helping to train us. So we are making pairings where people can play a game at home. Um, they get a list of uh, uh, battle plans and uh, opponents and they can make an appointment and play a game each other and send the score in. And next to it, we also organize uh, once a month a big training game together the two teams where we also want to practice the pairings because it's, of course, a big part of the game. So, yeah. Yeah, so we just did uh, last Sunday, we had a great day where we met, we did some pairing, we played some match and uh, tonight we will gather and then uh, uh, speak about uh, how we experienced what, what have we learned. <laughs> so that's the plan for, uh, for the coming months. We have um, next to it small training games, only for the team itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, up to September, we have right now around 25 days planned to play nice. together. Nice. So, That's it's, uh, it's, yeah, well, because we have such a short time and we are so an experienced team. I mean, mm -hmm. um, the team is um, very new and most of the players are very new in the team. Um, like I said, myself, I play four uh, years. We have in the team someone who only plays for two years. Mm -hmm. So we are really very new, rather than experienced. And therefore, we have to push ourselves very much uh, to train as much as we can to be as prepared as possible. Therefore, also our aim to go to Milan is the first time to experience how it is, how is it work, what do we need next year or in the coming years to get to the point one time that we might win. <laughs> but in the first time, it's just about experiencing. Yeah, well, it's anybody's game. Well, and, I, and I think also using this cool event to, to get more used uh, to the whole uh, team, team, um, team, team event organization or all the pairings that you talked about, which is kind of complex 
and uh, yeah, I mean, so the next event is not too far away, so it's it's a good training. No. Uh, it's a good training for the for Spirit's future as well. Yeah, that's why. So we have a, a weekly meeting on Discord where we discuss the leads, we discuss uh, what we experienced, and then we have training days. And I think that's the most we can do right now. Mm -hmm. That's a lot already, I think. Yeah, I think, I think so. I'm not, um, uh, I don't think it's more than that possible. We all work, we all have jobs, some of us have kids. So you do your best. Yeah. Well, I think you guys look and sound like a really solid team, like a, a really well-organized team. And uh, uh, it should be really fun to see you guys play in the, in the event. And, yeah, uh, we are also very excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the same, same for me. And let's go Especially after goes. seeing the location. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it looks really yeah, it's cool. Great. Yeah. It's really cool, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy to, to have had you here. And it's been really a pleasure for me. And do, do you have any closing thoughts, any shout outs or anything else you wanted to add before close the, this video? Well, if any Dutch person out there see this video and he or she is not in the community let uh, please uh, uh, look up me up uh, twitter uh, i'm Kwasana, or just on the facebook based on my name and get in touch with me i would love to give you to the group and get in touch oh okay well thank you again so much agnes i hope you had a good time thanks a lot and it was not too yeah, stressful <laughs> Not too. I think that's the best way. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, from a tournament okay. experience, tournament player like you, I'm sure it was okay to handle, right? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Enes. See you soon. See you.